Hi, this is Print Man, alias Ken Duncan, here to talk to you about photographic prints. Now the material I use is Hanamula fine art paper and I use the ultra smooth cotton rag. I find that this is the best material to use if you're talking about limited edition prints. And why do I choose Hanamula paper? Because Hanamula have been around for 400 years making paper. So someone who's been making paper that long when they tell me something's going to last, I'll believe them. <laughs> so now let me take you through the process of what I do to create a beautiful limited edition print. So first of all, we'll start off with the signing technique on how to sign it and what to do the correct way. And then we'll take you through to the spraying process so that you make sure you protect those beautiful prints. So here are a few handy little things to have when you're signing prints. A piece of card, obviously with a straight edge, um, so that you can use it to make sure your lettering is uh, kept straight and also it keeps your hand off the print. So very important. You need pigment based inks when it comes to signing pens because you want to make sure that your signature lasts the test of time. So make sure whatever you're signing with is archival and that you know that for sure. Another thing that's good to have is also some weights and you can make them yourself by just getting some weighty metal or something like that and covering it with felt because you don't want anything sharp that could potentially scratch the print. But these are good for when you roll the prints out so you can flatten them when you're signing them and also it's good to leave them flat for a period of time before you spray them. So these are good. So when you're signing uh, the print always you know, slow yourself down because you don't want to make mistakes when you're doing signing or otherwise you might have to get another print. So just keep everything level and then just signing, here we are signing. Make sure also whatever you're going to write on the title of the print that you have written down somewhere correctly so that you're not going to make any mistakes in the title. I like to sign outside the print area because I believe it's much better not to have anything actually in the, in the frame of the picture. So for me it, it's a much nicer look. So here we are ready to spray the print. I personally like to spray my own prints because I like to see them and make sure everything's perfect before I send it out to a client. But you can get your lab to, pro, uh, to spray them for you which makes it a lot easier. And I've actually got a unit where I've got a mag magnetic um, wall here where I stick the print to when I'm spraying. Now you don't necessarily have to have something as elaborate as this, it's just that I spray quite a few prints so I need something like this. So now we have the spray gun with the Hanamula matte print spray or print protector in the actual spray gun. You can also get this in small cans so you don't need something as elaborate as this so you can do your own prints at home. So here we go and also it's important although that this is very environmentally friendly you don't want to be breathing it in. So the thing is make sure you get a mask when you're spraying it. Also another important thing is when you're spraying is to make sure you have some protection over your eyes and have some glasses here and what I do is I first of all spray the print off to make sure there's nothing on the print and always still carry this cloth just in case there's some deposit on the print, your microfiber cloth. If you don't know where to get them you can get them online at kenduncan.com. Now we let that dry for about a couple of minutes then we'll do another pass. Basically we do one pass up and down then we do one across horizontally and then you do one at 45 degrees and in doing that you make sure you get an incredibly good coverage. So when I'm spraying the different directions you actually change the shape of the spray pattern. So basically you just turn this control here and basically whichever way that's going you go with it. So make sure that each level is put on and applied correctly. Now you don't have to make it as difficult as that but you know because of the quantity I'm using I need to do that. You can just use one of these spray cans and just put it on a table and make sure you shake it really well and basically bang off, off you go. And all the directions are on the can so if you're only doing you know a few prints then this is more than enough to make sure you protect your prints. Now why do I do this? This protection is so important I believe any inkjet print that's not protected will not last because you know when they talk about it'll last for so a hundred years they're talking about archively 
which is not on a wall where it's been or been framed or where air is traveling through the print. Because what happens when it prints on a wall, things are going to deposit on the print over time. Even though it's behind glass or acrylic, air still travels through an artwork. And with air comes deposits or contaminants that actually will settle on the print. So after 10 or 15 years, if you open up that print, you'll see a scum on your artwork. So if you haven't sprayed it and protected that print, what are you going to do? Because as soon as you start to try and clean that surface, it will just take the ink off the, the print or actually destroy the print. So if we spray it with this particular material, number one, it protects it from UV much better. It really gives you an added layer of UV protection. But more importantly, in 10 or 15 years time, when contaminants will land on the print, you can just get a damp cloth and wipe the print over and get rid of those contaminants and reframe your print. It also protects it from moisture and other things that may get onto the print. So that's why it's important to use print guard. Now we remove the magnets so that we're making sure we're getting coverage right over the print. Even though that a lot of this print will be under the mat, you just want to make sure that your whole print is protected. So now we're ready to take the print off and uh, allow it to dry inside so that then we can roll it up and send it off to our client or to our framers. Just be careful again not to kink the print. Now the print's well and truly dried. As I said before, what you can do is you can get a damp cloth and you can rub it and look, it has no effect that's going to be permanent on the print. So you can, amazing. So you can't do that to a normal inkjet print or you'd, uh, the ink would begin to run. Now I'm going to show you something that I don't recommend you try at home. But I just wanted to show you why I print guard my prints because it really, I really know that they are protected. And we're going to go extreme and again I say you do not do this to your prints. This is just for fun. And so here we've got our hose. And so there's a few bad marks on it. So here we go. So I get that off. And then we go maybe give it a rubber dub dub. And then all of a sudden we might dry it now. So there we are. As good as new. But I tell you, you don't do that actually. But it's just going to show you how robust is the process. Look at that, the, perf the print is in perfect condition still. So now we've finished the process of signing and also spraying the print. And what we need to do is leave the print out on the table for a period of time to let it dry before we roll it up. Maybe about half an hour to an hour, depending on the weather. So here we go, we're just gonna roll up the print. Be very careful. You should always have tissue paper on the surface so you don't get scuff marks. And this will, any good lab will send this any print with this material anyhow. And so basically we get it like that. Be careful when you're dealing with this paper not to kink it. You've always got to be very careful how you work with the paper. And this is why I always carry a little cloth with me too, just to make sure a soft microfiber cloth, cloth to make sure that you're not rolling something up into the print that's going to actually mark the print. So basically then all we do Roll it up. And not too tight a roll, just you know, a reasonable size because you don't want to create too much uh, tension on the print surface. So there we are. Put something around the print. Usually the print comes with this already around it. So now we've wrapped the print. We're ready to send this to the client anywhere in the world, obviously in a good cylinder, or off to the framer to get framed so you can deliver it to your client. So I hope this little tutorial's helped you and hope to see you again soon.